Hi, I got an email from an old grey beard who doesn't actually have a grey beard, but a grey goatee apparently. Um, anyway, said, hey, why don't I do a video extolling the virtues of analog multimeters versus this newfangled digital rubbish? Well, okay, let's take a look at it. Are there still any advantages to your classic analog multimeters like this, like this classic uh, Simpson 260 here, the 6X LPM model for those playing along at home, and your newfangled analog ones, your FET analog VOMs as they're called, VOM is volt ohmmeter, and they have dual FET as we'll take a look at. Um, are there any advantages to these over your traditional modern one? Hmm, let's take a look. Now, of course, I've got a rather soft spot for analog meters, but I haven't used one in anger for a long, long time because digitals just beat them. I've got to admit, they beat them in practically every aspect. And this is the first meter I ever owned. The classic uh, Micronta Tandy slash Radio Shack 22201U. Oh, brilliant. 20k ohms per volt. Um, what, what was it? 34 range, no, it was like 24 range or something like that, but hey, that's the one I first saved up by my pocket money and bought when I was a kid. Still works. Well, there's companies that still make them, but basically nobody uses it anymore. Okay, flame comments invited if you're, you're still using your classic analog multimeter, uh, but really the digital ones just beat them in almost every aspect, so unfortunately it's much easier to say in what areas the digitals are much better than analog. So we'll do that first, but then we'll look at, is there any advantage? Because a lot of people talk oh, about the meter, like the needle, oh, for fast changing signals, you know, the wiggle, 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 yeah, in the, in the needle is much better than your digital meter. Well, is it? We'll find out later. Now let's ignore for a minute the fact that uh, most uh, multimeters, digital multimeters are auto ranging these days and the analogs are manual ranging, but Let's not worry about that because you can get manual range in digital meters. Now, of course, the first noticeable difference is the display. The digital multimeter just tells you the voltage directly in volts or the resistance or current or whatever it is. With the analog, of course, we've got the meter uh, needle movement which goes across and you have to interpret the display. But not only that, you've got to actually zero the display as well using this little thing with your tongue at the right angle and tweak it and move that needle so that it's directly on the zero line there and that can change depending on the angle you have the meter at and the quality of your meter and everything else. Anyway, I've set that up and you may actually see the first thing here is that, look, you can see, that's why they have a mirror in there, your good ones do, they have a mirror We've got what's called parallax error in there, and you have to actually, when you're using the meter, line it up so that the actual needle itself, red, to help you actually see it, is directly over its mirror reflection. If, you, if it's off like that, you're viewing it at an angle, then you're going to get an error. So its accuracy is only valid when you're actually using it over like that. So, you know, it's like right there it's just geez I, I don't miss having to um, zero out my meter and uh, account for parallax error I, it's just no contest so let's actually measure a voltage here we're going to measure five volts here and well how do you read this off here well we've got it on the uh, 10 volt range at the moment this doesn't have a range doubler I can show you a range doubler later which even which complicates it things even more but on a 10 volt uh, range it's fairly easy because the scale over here actually says 10 right there so 8 6 and then of course they're all color coded so the black refers to the black scale up there and then they've got the green and the blue and the well they've got a black up the top for the ions but of course you can read it off so you know 10 8 6 and you can see that's pretty much bang on 5 but like is it 5.5 05 or is it like what? I mean granted this is a 50,000 count display but even a three and a half digit 2,000 count meter beats the pants of any analog meter in terms of resolution. And that's the thing with the resolution of this uh, needle what exactly is it? Well you've got the needle width in there and well <laughs> you know you kind of have to guess a bit but I'm, I'm guessing that there's at least 250 needle distances, I like uh, needle widths in that sweep at least. So assuming that we've got 
five needle widths between each one of those scale graduations there, then that's a total of 250 across there, five times uh, 50 there is 250. But even if you had, say, uh, 500, that's still only uh, 0.2, that represents a minimum resolution, or a, sorry, a maximum resolution, the highest resolution you can get with this, of, say, 0.2%, or maybe if you'll use that lower one, 0.4%. Uh, um, that's kind of like the best resolution you can get. So that would be the equivalent of this digital meter over here, not having these two digits at all, and only and having this digit here, the second half of the decimal place, jump up by uh, four, at a four counts at a time. You wouldn't even be able to get one count on there, but ah, uh, all your grey beards are going to go, yeah, but if I hold my tongue at the right angle, I can see that it's, you know, half a needle width across. Yeah, you can. But I think no matter how good you are, you really can't get past that second decimal place there. So, yeah, these things don't have the best resolution. But, you know, they're, they're adequate for a lot of purposes, just, you know, to see if you're in the ballpark. I mean, these things did for, you know, a hundred years or whatever before newfangled digital multimeters came along. And you can get analog meters like this uh, triplet 630NA that have what's called a range doubler. So in standard mode, volts, ohms, amps, it works. That's a 12 volt range. That's a 3 volt range, 60 volt range, etc. But if you put it volts, amps divided by 2, then this 12 volt range becomes a 6 volt range. And that gives you increased uh, resolution because you, you know, need a needle can travel uh, further and you can uh, get... A effectively a greater resolution, but the resolution of a digital, even a $2 digital meter, is still going to beat the pants off an analog. But the other thing with uh, these meter movements is that uh, they don't have a scale for every one of the switch positions down here. So let's go, for example, to the 25 volt range here. Where's 25 on this scale? 250, 50, 10? It ain't there. Um, you have to actually use the 250 volt scale and take off that last digit there. So that's 25. So, you know, here would actually be uh, 10 volts at that point there. So, you know, just another confusion of these analog meters. And you can come a gutter in that if you haven't got your brain engaged. And what about the accuracy of these things, like the specified manufacturer's accuracy? Well, unfortunately, look at the manual for this thing, and it's about 2% uh, for your DC volt. So that's worse than pretty much your worst one hung low digital multimeter on the market. And if you get something uh, you know, a little bit better, like this uh, triplet 630NA, still only 1.5% uh, DC accuracy. And that gets worse with AC, it's like 3%, so it's still not uh, 3 4% is quite common. Still not as good as a modern digital meter, but you wouldn't expect it. But, oh, it gets worse. You bet it gets worse. Let's just try and measure a humble resistor, something which is trivial on a digital multimeter. And, you know, reasonably accurate. They're not as accurate as uh, DC volts is always the most accurate thing on a uh, digital meter and also these analog meters but have a look at the scale here for ohms you've got to use this top one and those with a keen eye will realize that this is non-linear look at this like this one's linear you know 10 8 6 4 right in equal increments this one is not um zero is now over here which is full scale which is back to front to what it is for DC volts, so that alone is uh, confusing. And then it's you know the accuracy up here isn't uh, too bad, but once you get down to here, but if you're forced to go up in resistance and measure higher and higher and higher and higher, you get down to the point where the accuracy and resolution is just uh, like borderline unusable. So let's actually measure a 10k uh, resistor here. Let's actually put it on the 1k range, which basically means that uh, it's a times it's the resistance a 1k times the scale here. So the one over here would be 1k, 2k, 3k, and then 10k. So we'll measure a 10k resistor here. But one, the annoying thing is not only did did you have to zero the uh, scale over here for the DC volts, you've actually got to short out the ohms, and then you've got to use the ohms adjust knob, hold your tongue at the right angle, make sure there's no parallax error, get it right on zero there, 
trust me, I'm like leaning over at the cameras at a band angle, but we're zeroed it on that range because the other ranges might be different. I'll show you that in a sec. And then if we're lucky, we can measure our 10K resistor and there it is up there. It's 10K. So it's a fair way down the scale here. So our accuracy and resolution is actually going to be less. In fact, there's a bit of error, bit of error in that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's not terrific. Oh, the Simpsons letting us down. So let's to, to get a bit more resolution, we can do this. We can go to the 10K range like this, and you'll notice that it jumps up there. But aha, uh -huh, because it actually uses, this has two different batteries in it, a uh, 1.5 volt D cell and a 9 volt uh, battery in there, and they're used on the different ranges. And um, this one actually jumps up, so we actually have to re-zero this. You'll notice it's way off the zero before. So if you just want to change ranges, you've got to tweak that down. Okay, now we're tweaked that for zero. Let's plug it in and ta-da! We can measure our 10K. That one's bang on. Look at that. Oh, you hold your tongue at the right angle. Oh, it's a slight oh, half a needle's width. Half a bee's dick off. Oh! Now, unfortunately, for this um, venerable Simpson 260, which is uh, quite uh, common of its type, its maximum range was 10, or maximum uh, scale factor was 10K here. So, you know, if you want to measure 100K, okay, you're going to be over here. If you want to measure a meg, it's going to be all the way over here. Uh-oh. So there you go. We're trying to measure one meg. And you can see it's there. But geez, you know, with the needle, if you get half a needle's width off, you can be off by like 10%. Um, it's just nuts. So there's definitely no contest in the resistance and anyone who's using an analog meter to measure resistance, wow, you, you know, it, it's a painful experience. And of course they work okay for positive values, but if you want to measure negative, well, Let's measure negative five volts. It's easy on your digital meter. It just does it. Your analog eh, goes hard in the other direction. And if you do it, well, too hard, you might damage your uh, meter movement and actually bend the needle in there. But no, this Simpson is fancy pantsy. It's got one of these newfangled polarity switches so we can switch it to negative DC volts without having to change our leads around, swap them. Beauty. Now, the next thing about uh, analog meters is that, well, they're not as high input impedance as your uh, DC voltmeter. And that uh, becomes a real issue when you're trying to uh, measure things uh, in parallel in circuit. Let me demonstrate with DaveCat. So analog meters will actually have their input impedance specified in ohms per volt. And you can see that down here, 20,000 ohms per volt DC, and that's very typical of an analog meter like this. I used to have a Dick Smith analog meter once that had a really sensitive meter movement and it was 100k ohms per volt. But I, I don't think I've ever heard of one that's greater than 100k ohms per volt. So 20k ohms per volt, very typical. A really good one, it'd be 50, and a real superb one, it'd be 100k ohms per volt. But what does that mean? The thing about analog meters is that the meter movement here, apart from the ohm scale, which I'll talk about later, is uh, powered from your circuit under test. So the power to actually move this meter movement here actually comes from your circuit under test. So in this case, 20k ohms per volt. So if you take 1 volt DC divided by uh, 20k, that's actually 50 microamps. So it actually requires 50 microamps to move that needle all the way over here. And that 50 microamps, it's gonna come from the circuit you're testing. So if we have a look at Dave CAD here, if you're measuring a resistor divider in your circuit, for example, then your probes are gonna take 50 microamps if the meter is all the way over like that, regardless of which range you're on. So there it is, it translates to 50 microamps full scale. But what does that mean um, in actual uh, terms of error? If you're measuring the voltage divider, well, you're effectively putting a resistor in parallel with the resistor in circuit under test. And of course, this is exactly the same for your digital multimeter as well, but this one has a much higher input impedance or 10 mega ohms, a nominal uh, 10 mega ohms input, in, uh, input impedance 
um, on most of the voltage ranges, so it doesn't really affect anything but really high impedance circuits here. But let's demonstrate. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've got a resistor divider here with 200k resistors, um, and I've actually tweaked them to be exactly the same. And if we go up to the top here, you can see that we're feeding in precisely 10 volts, and what if we measure in the middle of that? It should be 5 volts, but it's not. It's 9.4.977 volts, and I'll leave those playing along at home to calculate if that is correct for a 10 mega ohm input impedance, or I think uh, the 121GW, I have to check the specs. Um, it could be like 11 mega ohms uh, in parallel with that 100K. But, you know, there's not too much error there at all in that kind of measurement for 100K. And of course, the higher the resistance uh, you go, the more error there's going to be with that 10 meg in parallel. But let's try it with the analog meter. Right, so let's check this out. We're measuring our top of our resistor divider up here. We're feeding in our 10 volts. Oh, that's within... Uh, tongue at the right angle. That's within half a needle's width, half a bee's dick. So, but let's measure the middle of the divider here. And we expect straight up in the middle like we saw before, but wah, 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 wah. What is that? That's pretty much bang on to 4 volts. So let's do the calculation here. We're on the 10 volt range, which is going to give us an input impedance of 20k ohms per volt. So 20k times 10 volts there, which is 200k. So we've got, if this is 100k and 100k, we've got 200k in parallel with our 100k here, which is 66.6666k. And if you do your voltage divider formula there, it works out to be 0.4 volts. And that's exactly what we're measuring. The error is enormous. But I will say that can also be advantageous, especially on the high sensitivity ones, the 50K or 100K ohms per volt. They can actually be better than your, di than your 10 mega ohm digital meters. Because even this one, if you take its maximum range here, of a thousand volts, you have to use the other uh, jack over here for the thousand volts, but that's okay. Thousand times 20k is 20 meg. So this actually has twice the input impedance on that highest range as your typical digital meter, but on all the other lower ranges, forget it. It's much, much worse, and you get that sort of <laughs> huge amount of error. And we can actually see that here on the various ranges. There we are, the 10 volt range, 200k. If you're on the two and a half volt range, 50k grown. One volt range, 20k. Well, there it is. There's your 20k ohms per volt range. But if we go right up to 500, you know, we're getting quite reasonable now. We're getting our standard 10 mega ohm input impedance. And as I said, you go up to 1,000 volts and you're going to be getting your 20 meg. I hear all the greybeards saying, but Dave, analog meters beat the pants off digital in terms of response. You can see the, me the needle wiggle. Well, let's actually try that out and see if it can beat a fast responding bar graph on a digital meter. All right, so what I'm feeding in is a 250 millivolt peak-to-peak uh, -peak sine wave superimposed on 4 volts DC offset. So, of course, it's measuring uh, 4 volts here. 4 volts, and let's have a look. Like, you can clearly see the bar graph going did 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 and the meter movement going like that. But can you see it on the analog? Yeah, you kind of can. Maybe. Yeah, I can kind of see a little bit of wiggle there. And if we take that up to, uh, say, 10 hertz, no, nah, can't see diddly squat. But you can still see the digital bar graph. You can still see that there's something there, and you can see that the reading is fluctuating. So, like, no contest. All right, let's drop the amplitude down to 100 millivolts. No, nah, still doing it, still much more readable or much more visible that there's something going on there on the digital meter. So much for your analog, but of course, you know, if you want your frequency to be one hertz, of course, but you can see something's happening on your digital as well. So, you know, to actually see that there's something there, what that is, you're not really sure because the meter movement takes uh, time to actually move, but the digital meter does it just fine. If we take our amplitude up to 500 millivolts, there we go. You can see it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know. So both of them, you can still do that, but there's no huge advantage 
on an analog meter like this. But maybe this one's just a bit slow. Let's try the triplet. Okay, there we go. 500 millivolts, 1 hertz. Let's change that to 5 hertz. And there we go. This one's a bit quicker. You can see the wiggle in that meter movement there. No worries. Let's take that up to 10 hertz. Can't really see it. <laughs> but you can see something's happening there on the digital. But not all digitals are created equal. Let's have a look at uh, this Keysight UU1272A. This thing's hopeless. Not only does the bar graph not show anything, but the digits are almost unreadable. What is, the, what is that value? I don't know. You tell me. So that's actually a case of uh, the update, fast update rate of this meter, which I believe is uh, seven times per second, actually being <laughs> too much of a problem there. This U1282A is doing better. Nice stable reading there, it just doesn't, you know, it just averages that out, no problems whatsoever. But you can clearly see that there's excursion there on the bar graph. Nice. And your classic Fluke 87.5, well, that's doing the business too. So as you can see, that's quite superior. I mean, we're, we're seeing 10 hertz updates there, no worries whatsoever, and you're never going to see that on the analog. So clearly the much acclaimed feature of the analog meter maybe in some circumstances is good, but modern uh, digitals with their uh, you know bar graph update, uh, fast um, sampling and bar graph update are just going to beat it. I mean let's uh, let's say if we go to 20 hertz, can it still see that? Yep, you can still see that. You can see that wiggling, you know, going back and forth. You can see that there's something on your signal. You just can't see it on the analog meter. And there we go, if you're talking uh, 5 hertz with a 1 volt RMS signal, look, you can actually see the excursions there. But, uh, you know, granted, it's kind of a bit harder to, like, read the scale of a digital bar graph compared to the analog here, but it takes time for the analog. I mean, it's you're not seeing the full excursion there. It's only if I, like, went down to 1 hertz, maybe you'll, uh, maybe you'll start to see that. There we go. That's better. But, like, the digital meter is just better responding. Once again, no contest. Now if we go back to the Simpson here, yeah, as you, like, you can see the excursions quite large there at uh, 10 hertz with the 1 volt RMS, 5 hertz. But Dave, didn't you know that one of the advantages of analog meters, you can uh, like measure caps, you can see it like shoot up and then get an indication of the capacitance value when it goes back. Well, yeah, Okay, good on you. I've got a capacitance mode. Much easier, <laughs> more accurate, and I don't have to calculate anything based on a decay factor of a meter needle movement. Might have been great back in the 60s, maybe, like you didn't have to get your like LCR bridge out or something, but eh, <laughs> no thanks. And as far as uh, input protection goes, well, cat ratings weren't around then when these things uh, existed. You can still buy this one. I don't know if they are uh, cat rated uh, these days. I'll have to have a look at uh, some new images. This is an old model. But uh, but basically, they'll have almost even your cheap uh, ones, you know, your bottom range ones, have diode protection, back-to-back -back diode protection, directly across the meter movement like that. So it is pretty hard to destroy, well, uh, destroy them by simple overloads, but surges and everything else, eh, they aren't going to be as robust as your newfangled uh, cat rated digital meters. And a lot of uh, analog meters will have a direct like 50 microamp mode because this is a 50 microamp full scale. So it this basically connects directly to the meter movement like that. And they will be like fuse protected and things like that, um, like on say uh, five amp range and stuff like that, all the other uh, regular current ranges. But anyway, yeah, you don't wanna be uh, using this on like big main stuff or anything like that. Yeah, you can really come a gutsa. So yeah, it's not uncommon to uh, blow your <laughs> the meter movement in your, or blow your diode protection or whatever, or you blow out your resistors or whatever in your analog meter. They don't have uh, newfangled, uh, you know, MOVs and PTCs and stuff like that. But uh, quite a few analog meters will have a good old-fashioned uh, mechanical overload, like a thermal overload in there. <laughs> nice. So you just oop, reset it. Oops, hooked it up wrong. Reset. One thing I do like about analog meters, they don't have these anymore. It's an output function. And totally contrary to its labeling output, it's actually an input. And what it does is it's basically the same as your regular uh, AC-DC 
um, input range, but it's AC coupled. So there's basically just a capacitor in series. If you have a look at the uh, teardowns I've done of these uh, on the video at the end of this, you'll see that uh, basically it's just a big capacitor in series and it removes any DC. And if you're wondering about these newfangled FET analog meters or FET volts, volt ohm meter as they're called, this one's even got a fancy pantsy dual FET. Look at that. Um, basically, you've got all the same limitations of a regular analog uh, meter, or you scale your ohms as backwards with the non-linear uh, scale and all your accuracy problems and your zero in problems, you still got the zero on there. Everything else is exactly the same, except the only thing it solves is the input impedance. It, on DC volts only, well, on this particular model anyway, the 22220 Micronta, um, slash Radio Shack slash Tandy for those playing along at home, uh, 10 meg ohms, a fixed 10 meg ohms on basically every DC volt range. So that's basically the only advantage whatsoever to a FET analog VOM. Everything else is basically the same. And on this particular one, as I said, you don't even get that on the AC volt range. It's in back to the old good old 10k ohms per volt. And DC amps, this one actually 316 millivolts, this one actually tells you the burden voltage. Or maximum burden voltage. Nice. Well, there you go. I think I've spent like 25 minutes or something talking about the differences between analog and uh, digital multimeters. And if there's really any advantage to these analogs these days, and I've got to say... Well, sorry, but, like, no, there isn't. Even for the, you know, the much celebrated factor of the meter, uh, the needle movement, you can see, like, little transitions and stuff like that. And I could, you could do other tests. Maybe there'd be some uh, modes and circumstances where the analog might still be a bit superior to a modern digital. But with the modern fast update in bar graphs, I think Fluke were the first to do a fast update respond in uh, bar graph and they were exactly designed for that purpose is to replicate or and beat the functionality of your analog meter movements so you know these are more accurate they're cheaper they've got vastly better resolution and they've got especially on ohms which uh, analog meters are hopeless for the usability it beats it hands down in practically every area so as much as i like analog meters sorry there's a reason why they've pretty much gone the way of the dodo although i can think of one advantage which will always be there pretty much um work with me here is that these meters do not need batteries if you're measuring voltage and current they're powered from the circuit under test so if you're stranded on a deserted island and you need a multimeter to measure your voltage and current and you need it to work you'd want to be taking an analog meter because you don't need those pesky batteries. But, uh, of course, you do need batteries for the ohms uh, scale because you've got to power the resistance under test to power the meter movement. But that's the only thing you need batteries for. But apart from that, you can take the batteries out of these and they still measure perfectly fine. And, of course, there's nothing electronic wrong to go with them. It's just a bunch of resistors and diodes inside these. And I'll link in at the end of the video somewhere here a teardown of uh, three classic analog multimeters but yeah maybe if you had a okay you've got a solar powered rechargeable wanky multimeter or something like that maybe you could it might win out on your deserted island but no come on sorry anyway if you enjoyed that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always if you think i'm wrong tell me down below go for it but i i, I still love the analog meters they're great nostalgia and i still love my first analog meter where's it gone oh using using my poor first analog multimeter to prop up the digital oh that's a lack of respect unbelievable this thing still works all these decades later catch you next time